have been absolutely frantic. Do you realize I haven't heard from you in almost 24 hours? Oh, listen, honey. I... Alex, I called your boss finally, and he told me that you'd had an argument and that you'd quit your job. No, honey, I got fired. Now, listen to me. Please, I'm in trouble. What do you mean? I know this is going to sound strange, but I think I killed a man. You what? I killed a man. Alex, if this is your idea of some excuse, no, honey, I don't... I, I'm not kidding. After that fight with the boss last night, I went out and I got loaded. I met this guy, Harry. We hit half the spots in San Francisco, and I woke up a few minutes ago, and he's lying in the bedroom. His head's all... Alex? Alex, are you sure you killed him? My coat was lying right beside him. We must have had a fight. Alex, are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Where are you? I don't know. I don't even remember coming here. Wait, I see something. Harry Baslan, apartment C, Heritage Arms, 2330 Main. All right, all right, I'll be right over. No, no, I'll be home right away. Alex, no, stay there and wait for me, darling. No. talk to you. Quite a ruckus last night, huh? Oh, yeah, yes. Must have been some party. You weren't a very nice neighbor cutting up at four o'clock in the morning. Honest people trying to get a little rest after a hard day's work. And you carrying on annoying the tenants. There's a sick woman downstairs. You're not giving her very much consideration. I'm very sorry. Oh, hangover, huh? Oh. Well, if you feel anything like you look. I feel rotten. Listen, buddy, this is the first time we've ever had a complaint about this building. Let's make it the last one, huh, Buster? Yes, sir. See that it doesn't happen again, huh? No, no, it won't happen again. You know, do unto others. What's the idea? Alex? Oh, uh, uh, this is my wife. The, the neighbors complained last night, honey. Uh, too much noise. Oh. Oh, y yes. I, I guess we did get kind of carried away, officer. Celebration, you know. Anniversary. Yeah. Oh. We won't let it happen again, will we, darling? Well, see that you don't. Do you think he suspects anything? No, but you shouldn't have come I here. I had to. There's no use both of us getting involved in this. Where is he? By the bed. Alex. No, Alex, you couldn't have done anything like that. Somehow did I get blood on my shirt? Darling, why would you want to kill a man that you, you had never met before last night? I don't know. This is what you've been predicting all along, isn't it? A mess old Alex couldn't laugh his way out of? Come on, darling, we've got to get out of here. Okay. He's still there. Alex, if you had only called me. Honey, I couldn't. I was too ashamed. I didn't want to face you. So I took the easy way out. Yeah. He was a friendly type, and I felt like I could use a friend. 
It's all mixed up in my head. The bars, there must have been four or five, and taxi cabs. And a storm. I do remember a storm. What storm? A storm last night, the thunder and lightning and rain. Darling, there was no storm last night. Not in San Francisco. Well, that's the thing I remember most clearly. I... It's no use. Please, please, try to remember, Alex. We went to another place. I don't think it was a bar, though. There was a view of the bay. And there were all kinds of little wooden horses, like a merry-go-round. And there was some weird-sounding music. And this guy was sitting at a crazy-looking piano. And I remember, Harry slipped me something to keep for him. It was a piece of paper. Do you still have it? I don't think so. I must have lost it. Well, do you remember what was written on it? No, I don't think I ever really looked at it. He told me not to lose it, that it was a matter of life or death. At least do you remember coming here, Alex? I think we were drinking in the kitchen. only two glasses, but I remember Baslan kept saying, have one little drink. It won't hurt you. He couldn't have been talking to me. No, but then there must have been a third person here. Then I remember he kept yelling. At you? I don't know. I guess so. I must have got sore and hit him with that bottle. Darling, you would have remembered that if you had done it. Oh, would I? I've always had a pretty convenient way of forgetting things that bother me, even when I was sober. I better call the police. No, 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 you, you must. What else can I do? A lot of people saw us together when they find the body. Alex, now wait just a minute. We can't be any worse off than we are now, right? Right. All right, Alex. Now let's try to find out before the police come here and find out what happened last night. Something that might clear you. Well, what do you think we're going to find out? We might just turn up more proof that I killed him. Well, if we do, it, at least we'll know. That's better than not knowing, isn't it? Yeah, I guess so. Oh, if we only knew something more about Basil. Well, I looked around the place before you got here. I lost my watch. Did you find it? No, I didn't. And I didn't find anything to clear up the picture on Baslon either. Listen, I'll look in the bedroom again. You keep an eye on the street, just in case. I came in, I remember him, and I saw him standing there. He was looking up at these windows. Did you find anything else in that room there? Yeah, there was a bank book. It shows a regular income of about 500 a month and a steady balance of around 3,000. And these matches from three different bars. Do you suppose those could be Baslin's favorite hangouts? Could be. Maybe we went to one of these places last night. Let's, let's go to this one, Patty's first, all right? Yeah, I gotta pick up a clean shirt okay. first. <clears throat> Honey, you sure you want to do this? Oh, of course I do. I'll never figure you out. I thought sure you'd be sore at me. Alex, I love you. Come on, now, just remember, we're an ordinary couple without a care in the world. Without a care in the world.
place look familiar to you? I think so. Let's go inside. Hi, remember me? Oh. Let's have a couple of beers. Recognize me either, just like the other places. Alex, look, you thought you remembered this place. Sure, like I thought I remembered thunder and lightning and rain when there wasn't any storm. Look, honey, we're just kidding ourselves. This is a job for the police. Well, well, well. Yeah. Will you look at the Iron Man? Well, back at it, huh? You couldn't even wait for me to come on duty. Uh, how's Harry? Well, I haven't heard. You know, I said right along this had happened. What would happen? Well, Harry, every time he starts drinking, he starts breaking glasses. Likes to take a glass in his hand and squeeze it until it breaks. Did you ever see a guy bleed so much? You know, it took us half an hour to get that fist bandaged. I, I, I wonder if you could help us settle an argument we're having. My husband claims that he came home around like one o'clock last night, and, and I say it was more like 2.30. Now, what time did you sweep them out of here? Early. Not much after 11. But I sort of figured you guys were on your way over to the Sumner place from here. Sumner's? Yeah, Harry. He just got himself engaged to marry that Maxine Sumner. Is she the one whose father owns half of San Francisco? Who's got the option on the rest? Yeah, that's the doll. Harry was bragging about her, so I just had a hunch that was going to be their next step. Isn't that just like a man? Visits one of the show places of San Francisco and doesn't even tell me about it. <laughs> what ha else happened here last night that he's not telling me about? Are there a lot of pretty girls around? <laughs> well, if there were, I wouldn't tell you. But I can't tell you if there weren't. Uh, excuse me a moment, but did my husband lose his watch here? No, ma'am. Excuse me, folks. At least now we know you got the blood on your shirt by helping Harry, not hurting him. And the important thing is that you went to the Sumner's place after you left here. Maybe. He's not sure we did. Well, at least it's something, darling. It's a lead to go on. Yeah. Well, the Sumner's live across the bay in Sausalito. Come on, let's go. Well, how about it, folks? A refresher course? Oh, no, thanks. We've got to be going. Oh, my wife believes me now, thanks to you. <laughs> yeah, pleasure. Especially when it's the truth. <laughs> Hello? He just left here. He has his wife with him. see Miss Sumner, please. Very sorry. Miss Sumner, not in. Oh. Well, maybe you could help me. Uh, <laughs> w w was I here last night? Cannot say, sir. Last night was my night off. Oh. Good evening. Oh, good evening. Uh, my name is Greg Fletcher. How do you do? I'm Alex Hill, and this is my wife, Mrs. Hill. How do you do? You uh, wanted to see Maxine? Yes, please. It's very urgent. We'll only take a minute or two of her time. Well, uh... If you'd just wait here, please. Thank you. Thank you. Does this place recall anything to you? He looks familiar, but he didn't seem to recognize me. You know, it's funny, Alex. I keep thinking I've seen him before, too.
Here's the crazy piano. Darling, it's a harpsichord. Harpsichord. Something about a boat. You were on a boat? No, no, something about a boat. What, 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 Madeline had a boat. He had a boat. I was going to get a boat. A boat. Boat. Was it a special kind of boat, Alex? No. Maybe, maybe a little boat. Hmm? No. A, a big boat? No, I don't remember. Good evening. Friends of Maxine? Uh, yes, uh, we are waiting for her. I'm her father. Oh, how do you oh. do, Mr. Sumner? I'm Alex Hill. And this is my wife, Mrs. Hill. How do you do? Won't you sit down? Thank you. Maxine doesn't know many young married couples. Oh. <laughs> well, <clears throat> actually, we're not that well acquainted with her. As a matter of fact, my wife hasn't met her yet. No. No, you see, my, my husband was here last night with a friend of your daughter's. Oh, I see. <laughs> yeah. We had quite an evening for ourselves. I lost my watch somewhere, and Baslon said I might have lost it here. Who did you say? Well, Harry Baslon. Baslon had the nerve to come back here again? He seemed to be right at home. Yes, I can imagine. He's no good. He's a four-flusher. I threw him out the last time he was here. Well, I, I didn't know that. I only met him last night. I'd advise you to be more discriminating, Mr. Hill. Uh, Mr. Sumner, uh, do you like boats? Yes, runs in the family. My hobby's sailing. Maxine likes speed. Oh, Harry likes speed, too. I remember last night he asked her to take him for a ride on the bay. Maxine hasn't had her boat out in months. Became bored with it, as she does with everything. Oh, there you are. Maxine, what's all this about Harry Baslon's being here last night? Harry? Well, I haven't seen him in weeks. Well, this man, uh, what's the name? Hill, Alex Hill. Yes, Mr. Hill says that he and Harry Baslon were in this room last night. Well, I'm afraid Mr. Hill is mistaken. No one was here last night, well, except Maxine and me. What is this, some kind of practical joke? Maxine, you didn't entertain Baslon and this man? I've never seen Mr. Hill until now, and last night, Greg and I had dinner here alone together. We played some records and talked. Well, I left about one. Is this some sort of racket you and your friend Baslon have worked up? No, sir. You say you were here, they say you weren't. What am I supposed to believe? Well, to tell you the truth, I'm not quite clear about what happened last night. <laughs> Bourbon amnesia? You know, probably Harry talked about me and about this place, and you got the idea you'd actually been oh, here. Oh, sure. Baslin enjoyed bragging about his visits here, his friendship with Maxine. Friendship? Well, he told my husband that he was going to marry Miss Sumner. <laughs> well, me marry Harry Baslin? Well, he must have been drunk. Maxine's engaged to Gray. Uh, now, look, if you're so concerned about filling in the gaps, why don't you talk to your partner, Mr. Baslin? Let him put you straight as to where you were, huh? Better forget about it, Mr. Hill. Perhaps your watch will turn up. One thing is certain. You didn't lose it here. I guess we'd better go, Alex. Yeah. Uh, I'm driving across the bridge. Let me give you a lift. No, thank you. We have a car. Well, uh, perhaps you'd uh, like to leave your address in case the watch should turn up? No, that's all right. I'm afraid I was mistaken. Or you could leave your phone number. Let them go, Greg. Well, uh, perhaps we'll run into each other again? Perhaps. I'm very sorry we barged in like this. Next time, pick a better drinking companion, Mr. Hill. Good night. Thanks. Good night. All right, now let's have it. Why did you lie to them both? We weren't lying. Maxine, do you think you can fool me? Well, you heard Greg. I heard him. I've listened to Greg lying for you since you were in kindergarten. Greg, I want to know, I want to know what went on here last night. Hey, you're great. You're just great. Will you take the word of some drunks that stumble in here rather than believe me? Only because Baslon's mixed up in it. Maxine, I want to know what it is with you and Harry Baslon. Why did he tell that man he was going to marry you? Well, you're blaming me for Harry's lies. Greg, are you protecting her? If she's in some kind of trouble because of Baslon... I'm not. There's nothing Harry Baslon can do to hurt me. Now, let's just skip the rest of this father-daughter bit. I'm tired. As usual, there's no sense in going on with this.
Stop it, Greg. You know, for once in your life, Maxine, you're going to have to be patient. Patience isn't one of my virtues. Well, then you'd better profit from my experience, darling. Play it safe and careful. Not me. The world's full of people like that. And what have they got? They're dead before they ever make up their minds about anything. Not always. Sometimes waiting pays off. Maxine? Now look at... Oh, Greg! If I ever get out of this mess... If we ever get out of this mess... No, you don't really mean that, Maxine, because even now I can get out, and where would that leave you, huh? Oh, unless, of course, you run and tell Daddy, but then you didn't tell him in the first place. And if Daddy knew, Daddy would do more than just slap. Don't you ever do that to me again. Oh, yes, it's quite a shock, I expect. After all the punishment I've taken from you, this is the first time it's ever occurred to me to hit back. Better stay here, Greg. You too, Maxie. The police are coming over to have a little talk with us. Some public spirited citizen has killed Harry Baslin. Well, hello. Back again? Yeah, a couple of bourbon on the rocks, Willie. All right. Was that Greg followed us? He might have, but I don't think so. You know, if, if we could only figure out how you got from the Sumner's house to Basin's apartment. I have a, gr a hunch that Greg took us there. Did he go upstairs with you? Because that would be very important. He could have been the third person. I don't know. Why don't I just go to the police? Oh, Alex, you can't. Sumner and Alex, look at that. That's the storm I was telling you about. It is? Excuse me. Oh, I'm on soon. It's a bit corny, but the customers like it. Yes, my husband told me about it, and I had to come and see it for myself. Well, it works from a switch behind the bar, then. Oh, I see. Alex, what's the matter? I remember. I was standing at the bar when Bassalon slipped me the paper. Yes. During the storm. He told me not to lose it. It was a matter of life or death. Yes. Then I took the paper, and... Oh, I never put anything in here. Here it is. Alameda Boat Shop. Wait, it's a receipt for boat repairs. There's no name on it. Well, there's the date now, June 2nd. Mm. And there's this number down here at the bottom. That must be the registration number of the boat. I wonder why he thought that keeping this was a matter of life and death. Must be important, but I don't know how. Well, we found the storm, and now we found the piece of paper. Yeah, but why would he give it to me? Alameda Boat Shop, Alameda. Darling, look, let's go to the Alameda Boat Shop. Maybe we can find something out there. Oh, it's too late tonight, honey. We'll go tomorrow morning. Oh, I guess you're right. What's the matter, tired, baby? Oh, I'll give you some pretty rough times, huh? Well, life with you may... Not be a bore, but it certainly is hectic. <laughs> you think it could sleep in an all-night movie, honey? I think it'd be safer. You know, I think I could sleep in the middle of the Golden Gate Bridge. We'll have a couple of more, then leave. Right. Willie. Yes. A couple more, please. Yeah. Martin. Yes, sir. Well, look, officers. We've got no trouble here. Were you on duty last night? Yes, sir. Was a regular customer of yours named Baslon, Harry Baslon, in here? Oh, he sure was. What's the matter? Harry get himself into some kind of trouble? Harry's dead. We're looking for his murderer. Do you, uh, recognize this couple? Yeah. 
They were sitting right at that table. Quick. Regarding the bottle killers, there's no further word this morning concerning the whereabouts of Alex and Connie Hill, murder suspects in the slaying of Harry Baslon. Almost apprehended by the police in a bar last night, the couple managed to escape police fire. Apparently unhurt, the elusive couple disappeared and have not been seen since. However, police have drawn a net around the area in which they are believed to be hiding. Authorities are confident of their capture before the day is out. It is not known whether or not the fugitives are armed. recognized us? Look, honey, we're just asking to be picked up by sticking together. Darling, maybe we'll find out something about the receipt here that we can go to the police with. I hope so. But if we both go in there and start asking questions, they're bound to spot us. Now, why don't you grab a little breakfast over at that Don't restaurant? folks. Oh, yes, uh, we're looking for the owner. That'll be me, George Trennan. Oh, well, Mr. Trennan, I'm a tax consultant. My secretary and I are checking up on a repair bill from your shop. We found it among the tax papers of a client of ours, and... He died recently, but he didn't own a boat. Hmm. You got an office uh, around... My office is in San Francisco. We were hoping you'd be able to identify the bill and tell us who the work was done for. Hmm. No mistake. It's my shop. Mark Paid. Prow. Hull. Refinishing. Well, now, do you remember the job, Mr. Trinan? Offhand, I don't. Uh, oh, wait a minute. This bill is dated June 2nd. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I wasn't here May or June. I had a bad siege of Bacitis. Had a fellow working for me. He kept the yard going. He must have handled this job. Funny this should turn up today. The fellow that fixed that boat was murdered night before last. Likely you uh, seen it in the papers. Name was Baslin, Harry Baslin. Oh, yes, I think uh, we did. Uh, yes. uh, uh -huh. Unpredictable fellow quit without giving no notice. I had to shut down until I would be able to get up and be around. Well, would there be any other record of this, uh, these repairs? Yeah, it should be. Oh. Wait a minute. This is the original bill. We give the duplicate to the customer, but we keep the original for our record. I don't understand. Well, would you know whose boat it was? No, I don't know. Funny this original should be out. I better check my books. Oh, perhaps the boat belonged to Mr. Baslon. No. 
Why would your client pay Baslin's bill, even if he owned the boat? Uh, you wait here till I check my book. Yeah, let's get out of here. this program for a news bulletin. Alex Hill and his wife, alleged killers, are now believed to have slipped past roadblocks and crossed the bay into San Francisco proper. Homicide officers declined to comment on the significance of the fugitive couple's visit to the Alameda boat shop. I told you Harry must have given Hill that receipt. He could have gotten it last night. It never occurred to me that Baslin would give it to him. But I just might have searched him, sweetheart, if you hadn't panicked. Me to do when I saw all what right, I... all right. Now, look, honey, we can't fight each other now. We're in this together. What are we going to do? I'll think of something. all over the papers. I went through the back files of the newspapers for the week of June 2nd. Look what I found. May 31st. 15-year-old Sausalito boy in boat accident. A small boat was hit by a much larger craft which sped away, leaving the boy to drown. Yeah. Now, we know Maxine Sumner owns a boat that she hasn't used in months. And we've got a dated receipt for repair bills with no name on it. You know why she took the boat all the way over to Alameda to get it repaired? Well, she probably didn't want to be recognized. Right. But Baslan did recognize her. Now, if it's her boat, it all fits. Well, then we can go to the police with this. No, no, no. We've got to be sure it's her boat first. If it isn't, they've got me. Saturday and the city offices aren't open until Monday. We can't stay here for two more days. I better go back to the bat to to uh, Mr. Sumner's place. No, Alex. Yeah, and then I'll sneak in the boathouse and check the registration number. But Alex, you can't go there during broad daylight. That's right. I'll wait a couple of hours and then go. If I don't get back by ten o'clock, you take this receipt to the police. Oh, Alex, no, please let me go with you. Now, honey, we both agreed on this. My chances are much better if I go alone. If anything should go wrong, you've got the receipt. All right. Oh, you certainly messed things up. Don't you blame me, sweetheart. The fault is yours. Why did you have to stop paying Baslin? Look, you know he wanted more money, and when I refused, he threatened to tell my father. I'll go to the police. But you made him suspicious, sweetheart, when you changed your mind so fast. That's why he picked up a stranger and brought him along. You know, it's just lucky for us that Hill went back to Basson's apartment and passed out. Lucky? Yes, lucky. Oh, all right, I... I didn't think so at the time. When I realized that I'd killed him, Hill was right there to be set up as the Patsy. So we didn't find the receipt, so at least the blackmailing's over. Patsy's got the receipt, and the Patsy's getting smart. I wonder what he learned at the boatyard. Uh, listen, Maxine. 
that boat repair bill. It ties you in with the accident, the boy drowning, but it doesn't mean that you had anything to do with Baslin's murder. What do you have in mind? Hill goes to prison for killing Harry, while I end up with a two to five year sentence for manslaughter? But your dad's lawyers would get you off. I don't like the odds. And I don't like the idea of me in prison and you outside. But the other way, they'd have us for premeditated Listen, murder. Listen, we can still get out of this. Look, we can take the boat out and sink it. No. Or, or if the boathouse will be... Getting rid of the boat is no answer. The registration number's on record. It's the receipt. That's what we've got to destroy. Well, if we only knew where they were. Well, come on now, let's think. Now, at Alameda, he must have found out about Baslin's working there, right? So the next step would be to compare the number on the receipt with the registration number of your boat. That means he can call the office no, where the records no, are kept. No, no, they're closed until Monday morning. Unless... What? Unless he decides not to wait and comes back here to check. But the police are watching the house. There's only one man and he's in the driveway. Now, well, Hill would probably try to sneak in from the basin. Oh, we've got to be ready. And this time we finish what we start. On him, huh? All right, Hill, where's that receipt? Maybe his wife has it. I mailed it to the police. By Monday, they'll have all the information. Look, boy, one shove and we can make it look like suicide. I suppose so. But then my wife would know it wasn't, wouldn't she? He's bluffing. He didn't mail it to the police. Otherwise, he wouldn't have gone to the boatyard. Sure, your wife has it. What's the difference? If I'm not back by a certain time, the police end up with it anyway. She's waiting for him. But where, Hill? Where? <laughs> No, 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 look, uh, we'll make it worth your while. Oh, no. Since I know what Harry knew, I'd liable to end up the same way. See, you've been on the run. You you couldn't go home, but, but, but you'd have to spend the night someplace. A hotel, but there are dozens. Now, wait a minute. Hey, those ticket stubs. Coming attractions. Lyric all-night movie theater. Huh? That's a week old. I stuffed it in my pocket. Why is there a light in the boathouse? Let's see. All right, Hill. We had a report. You're on this side of the bay. Listen, I didn't do it. They Just did. take it easy. What's he doing listen, here? Listen. Shut up. You can talk your head off downtown. Mr. Sumner, ask your daughter why she stopped using her boat so suddenly. Go ahead, ask her. Why on earth should I ask my daughter anything? Six months ago, she rammed into another boat out in the bay. She left a 15-year-old kid to drown. Her boat was damaged, so she took it across the bay to Alameda, where nobody knew her, to get it patched up. That isn't true. This man is desperate, and he's trying to involve me. The Alameda boat yard. Yeah. And the man who did the repairs was Harry Baslin. He recognized her, so he blackmailed her. He's making this up. Baslin had a receipt for the boat repairs with a date on it, and also the registration number of the boat. He sensed danger the other night when we were in a bar, and he slipped it to me for safekeeping. Are you accusing my daughter of having killed Baslin in order to get that receipt? She and Greg took us back to Baslin's apartment. One of them hit him over the head with a bottle. He tried to find the receipt, but couldn't. So they left me there to be the fall guy. Miss Sumner? He's lying. He's trying to save himself. All this talk about blackmail and boating accidents, it's fantastic. There's not a word of truth in any of it. Except for one thing. Baslon hasn't had a job since he quit the Alameda boat yard in June. Yet he's had a monthly income of $500. Any idea, Miss Sumner, what the source of that income might have been? Lieutenant, I must forbid my daughter to answer any questions until we have consulted my lawyers. Did they get that receipt? No, my wife has it. She's waiting for me in a the movie theater. Let's go see her. I'm leaving you and Mr. Fletcher in the custody of the sergeant. Fletcher? What happened to Fletcher? Come on, let's find him. Maxine, why? 
why didn't you let me know? I could have handled Baslon. I know. You can do anything. It's funny. A man who can do no wrong, his daughter has never done anything right. <laughs> Don't you think it's very funny? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, let's not play games. Your seat, Baslin, gave to your husband. Alex, what have you done? Alex, give me no! Your seat. No, I won't! No, stop him! Don't give it to him! No, don't let him have it! No, it's mine! No, no, don't! He's lying! He's lying! Stop him! Stop him! Stop him! Stop him! He has my bag and has the receipt in it. A piece of paper, two lives, almost a couple more. I did it, but I didn't mean to kill him. Look, Maxine, she came to me. She was in trouble. I love her. She needed me. Don't you understand? You don't know what it is to love someone so much. So much. We'll need a statement from both of you tomorrow. Got to get some rest. All right, break it down. Come on. Over well, what are we going to do for excitement now? Oh, Alex, let's go home. Well, I need a a drink, a meal, a shave, and a job. Where do I fit in? Right here. <laughs> Come on, let's go. No. It's so nice not to be wanted anymore. That's what you think. 